You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. All right, folks, we are back. Another episode of Ain't No Seats podcast. But first, we got to talk about Emprise Bank. You can open an account with Emprise Bank in less than five minutes. The savings just start there. Emprise is a trusted partner with a variety of products and services to help you achieve your goals. Don't be tethered to a brick building. Start a meaningful relationship with a bank that has your best in mind. Um, they mentioned achieving your goals. And boys, the Kansas football Jayhawks have done more than I think any of us would have ever believed we could do this year. It seems insane saying these words out loud, but the Hawks are 4-0 and and sit atop the Big 12 standings. Um, what a day at the booth on Saturday. Place actually was full. It was incredible. Something that, like, I couldn't – again, like, it was I, – I knew we were going to be packed. I knew it was going to be full. But it, until you got there and saw it actually happening, it didn't sit in with me. But to see that stadium full, hear the roar on some of those big plays. We were tweeting about them. Um, I, I truly can't, I can't believe how incredible these last four games have been. The Hawks are legitimately good, um, and that's just where we're at. B-turn, give me, give me your thoughts. How are you feeling after one of – we'll have to talk about this. You just had one of the best weeks of all time, and I hope you know that you may have beat <clears throat> Um, I was going to agree with you on the ticket thing, just because 11 a.m. game, you sell it out. Back of my mind, driving to Lawrence, I'm still worried. It's like, are people going to make it to the 11 a.m. kickoff? I go in a little early, um, and you just see the fans filing in. And I agree, I was a little worried because the kickoff time, but what a perfect day. We all get there. You guys get there before 7, probably. I roll in a little after. It's a little cold in the morning. Brandon McAnderson stops by, says what's up, uh, former KU linebacker Mike Reynolds played in the NFL, came by. Tyshawn Taylor came by. We had people bring us free wheel pizza. Fantastic. Um, some people drank some alcohol. Um, tailgate was perfect. A lot of people pulled up. The booth was great. We've looked better than every team we played so far, and it's not even close. It's not even close. No. They were close games. Uh, Houston was close for a half. West Virginia was close. Went to overtime, obviously, but we were the better team in every game this year. And Duke, we left a lot of points on the field. We'll get into that. But 4-0, haven't won more than three games since 2009, and they're, they've reached that week four. And they beat, according to a lot of fan bases, they're not good wins. I think they're great wins, especially for yeah. Kansas football, especially two of them being on the road. Games we were dogs in, and two of those, two, two score dogs in two of those. I think they've won two. I think they've had two great wins. Duke, they've beaten. They were undefeated. I think we have three solid wins, and we'll get into this too. It's outrageous that they aren't ranked. Oh, I mean, the disrespect uh, is absolutely insane. AB, we opened last episode. I think you said at the beginning of last episode, I said, how, you know, how bought in are we? How, how crazy are our expectations about to be? And I think you said, I'm close. I'm really, really close to just like getting banana land expectations. Uh, just talk, where are you at? How are you feeling? Um, are we going 12 and 0? What are you thinking? We might as well go 12 and 0. Um, I'm like more bought in than I was last week. And it wasn't even just really because of us, like Oklahoma losing to K-State, who I think we're like very similar with talent wise, game wise, team wise, like that just kind of sent me a message like any like there's not one team in the list of 10 in the Big 12 that I couldn't like at least make an argument for playing in the Big 12 championship game. And yeah. that obviously includes us. So expectations are sky high. I'm not going to like predict that or anything, but just the fact that it's where next game we play is going to be October and we're still like 1000 percent invested in football and don't even realize basketball starts in like a month. Um, it like feels like very like different weeks. Yeah, it feels very different, but it feels very good. And uh, it's about time we have some good football to talk about and watch. Yeah, so obviously incredible weekend. Booth was full. Um, but you you kind of said it, B-Turn. A-B, I think we even talked about this. Like, we won, we won. We covered the spread. But in a weird way, that was probably like our worst showing. 
right? Like I just, and I think we all were worried, like would nerves play a factor? Would, you know, being in front of a huge crowd play a factor? And I don't think we played bad. Like we certainly didn't play bad, but we just made a few mistakes and didn't capitalize at certain moments where we had been. But to still do that and cover a spread and beat a power five team, like that's insane. KU makes mistakes in the past, they lose by 30. We're making mistakes and we're still still winning the game. So, like, from an overall just football standpoint of that game, how would you guys feel about it? Yeah, I felt great. And I think Duke deserves more credit than they get. I think Leonard's a super solid um, quarterback. The running backs were solid. They had a receiver make a huge catch near the end zone. So, our def- like, think about it. They were Duke was sitting at 13 points for a while. Our defense was a lot better, and we've said they're going to be better. They still got to get those pieces meshing and things like that. But I wanted to read you guys off our drives from Saturday. Like what it, how many points we left on the field and what we did. So first drive, fourth and goal. Uh, they get stopped at the inch yard line, went and pistol. I don't know why that drives me crazy. And then they go touchdown. Devin Neal fumbles inside the 25 touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. They got, they got into Duke territory fourth and two at the 36. They're lined up to go for it. False start. Um, touchdown and then onside kick, get it at midfield. They run it three times, which drove me crazy. Get a first down. JD's amazing. Keep it in his hands in the game. Instead, you're running it three times to give them the ball back. And they had a chance. They got inside the 30. I was scared shitless. And made that way too interesting. (laughs) So we, we have first and goal at the five. Don't, and don't, we get to the inch yard line. Don't score. Fourth and two at the 36, false start. We would have went for it, and we've been so good on fourth downs, and then they stop us at midfield. So we either scored every drive or we turned it over or got stopped in their territory. That's how good this offense is right now. And our our third down – we're 30 for 45 on third downs, 67% conversion rate. It's like yeah, second – it's like first or second in the country right now. And I don't know how you feel, how you two feel, but – and I'm not gonna. I'm not comparing him to Patrick Mahomes, but I feel like the way I feel with Patrick Mahomes on third down is where I'm getting to with JD right now. I don't know if that sounds crazy to you, but when it's third down and manageable or whatever, I feel incredibly good. He finds Lawrence Arnold or Luke Grimm, his security blankets, and they find a way to move the chains. They're like I just said, they're close to seventy percent on third down conversions. Yeah, I mean. It's crazy. Jalen Daniels, he's 10 touchdowns his last two games. Absolutely insane. Um, Finally, I think finally, would you say, A.B., this weekend was the first time, at least betting odds-wise, he started to get some true respect, right? Like, people are finally legitimately putting him in conversation as, like, a legit Heisman candidate, which, again, hard to even fathom. But, like, he's that good. Like yeah. there, it's not a fluke. It's not. He's 19 years old. And he's that good. It's crazy. Yeah, I think I saw in DraftKings he's sixth right now in like the odds, <laughs> and a different book. I don't want to name him because of our connection, obviously. But I got a text earlier and said like, "Hey, da- Daniels is 66 to one on this other book for the Heisman. If you guys want to take it at better value than everywhere else." And I just got on there to check it 20 minutes before we started the podcast. It had already dropped to 40 to one. And a day where they didn't play a game, nothing happened. There's nothing newsworthy going on in college football. He went from 66 to 1 to 40 to 1 in like a span of five hours. Um, it's insane. And I should have said this in the confidence meter for actually the football team. But it was like very refreshing and made me more confident to go out and see us win a game where I feel like we threw the ball to win instead of doing all the creative runs, and which is awesome. But the fact that I know that we have both and can pull out, you know, on a week-to-week basis, do we want to win by throwing for 300 yards and four touchdowns, or do we want to win by giving six guys carries, each of them for like 50 yards a pop, and four of them score touchdowns on the ground? It's yeah. going to be impossible to stop the more that they learn, the more they get comfortable, and they're just going to be able to do literally anything in the world. I don't know who can stop them. Speaking of comfortable, how comfortable are you guys just watching this team play right now? Yeah, like the whole – Honest, obviously they got the ball late and they were driving down eight. They still would have had to get a two point conversion, but I'm sitting there just feeling so good about this offense. They score yeah. 35 points and it easily could have been closer to 45 50. And I just feel so good the whole game. Even if Duke would have scored before half or whatever and they got the ball coming out, I just feel so good about Kansas football and these guys putting them in the right spots, like the offensive line blocking schemes and 
High Shaw, I'm coming in the year. We thought Devin Neal would be the rest, best running back. I think Daniel High Shaw right now is by far the best back on this team. And I haven't really told many people this, but we've thought it for weeks. Kai Thomas, he's not 100%. He's dealing with a turf toe injury. And people thought he would be our best overall back um, coming into this year. So if well, imagine when they get him healthy and you can throw four different guys at teams and none of our running well, backs get tired. And JD, JD's are. So I was looking earlier. We've rushed for 200 plus in all four games, and JD's been our leading rusher in the last three games. He's has, hmm, I don't know how many, but he's been, he's he's our leading rusher on the year. Um, it's just crazy to me. They've rushed for 204 it's, straight, and he's been the leading rusher in three of those. I mean, you said the thing about Highshaw, like all off season, all you heard about was one. Obviously, Neil's like a fan favorite, the local kid. Um, and then Sevion Morrison initially got everyone's attention because he's a transfer from Nebraska, and like that was a big news. And then Kai Thomas, another local guy that transferred from Minnesota, had a huge bowl game. And we just kind of like, not that we wrote Daniel Highshaw off, but we just forgot about him and we didn't talk much about him. But like, yeah, I think he is the best back on this team. That play he had with the call that I am obsessed with, where Eric Collins just loses his <gasps> mind. Look at that Look guy at go! Oh, it's so, incredible. JD, but, I found the JD numbers last three games. 35 rushes, 291 rushing yards, 8.3 a carry. Almost 100 a game. People don't do that. In a, quarterbacks don't do that even close in a season. Dude, it, I mean, and so, AB, you've been, like, really, you've retweeted a bunch of stuff. You've said it. Like, if this KU team – wore Oklahoma uniforms mm -hmm. and had uh, Brent Venables or Lincoln Riley as their head coach. And like Jalen Daniels is one, the front runner for the Heisman, right? I mean, I know Stroud and uh, Bryce Young have been really, I honestly don't know their stats good enough to say whether they're better than Jalen. I got like, I got a Heisman. If you guys can give me a little Heisman segment, I got those numbers. In All a little right, bit, good. whenever you guys but want to do it. I want A.B. to touch on this. Like, would Jalen be the front runner, and would we be a top 10 team right now if our name wasn't Kansas? Yes. Like, in the video we tweeted out earlier, too, Fornelli was talking about Penn State. They also started unranked. They're a big brand. They go 4-0. Resumes are, I mean, they're pretty similar. They don't have any insane wins. They have a couple of good ones like us. And they're 11th in the nation right now. So, yeah, we'd be right around top 10. Obviously, the quarterback who's getting Heisman candidacy from being unranked and at KU, if he was at a huge school, I think he'd probably be up on an equal level with um, Bryce Young and Stroud, like you said. But it's just it's just very annoying. And we can get into it if we want to with the rankings and everything at some point. But I'm just so exhausted by just looking at it. And the fact that it was K-State that jumped us really does suck. But it's, it's just – there's no – I'm tired of the same arguments every time with strength of schedule, which is just wrong, and we don't have good wins, which is just wrong, and it's just it's exhausting. So it is. I, it's like in the NCAA tournament when a team gets left out, where it was just so clear that their resume belonged in the NCAA tournament, and it was mm -hmm. so clear they had a better resume than this team that got in. And it's just like I get it. Us being ranked 25th or 26th does not matter. But it's still just annoying that these kids, the they earned it. They've been a top 25 team, really a top 15, top 10 team. And to not have them ranked is just bananas. And we can get more into a B term. Yeah, let's you, go. I, I, I mean, mean, you guys just made amazing points. I think that was, I, that was great. I don't know if you saw this. Dave Reardon, I tweeted at him from our pod account, and he's from Hawaii. So he responded in like late his last name night. Rear end reared in okay um but Ren? he i said hey you know care to comment on why you ranked james madison but not kansas <laughs> and like that that sounds absurd but james madison has like they beat middle tennessee state who just beat miami and i think james madison beat app state is that right yeah they Maybe, just beat them know? on Saturday. they just beat them on saturday came back from down 28-3 and so this guy says, yeah, sure, here's why I did it. It was close between several teams, came down to Kansas and JMU. Kansas has some decent wins, he says, but JMU's lopsided win over Middle Tennessee State, which has since won all three, including over Miami, put them over the top. It's like 
he's valuing – he basically said the fact that they beat Middle Tennessee State by a bunch of points but doesn't talk about how we blew Houston out on the road, uh, how we – I mean, I know we didn't blow Duke out, but we really kind of did. Dominated. How we, I mean, we won by – went we to overtime. We covered the spread. And we, yeah, yeah just... I mean, it's just like – I. I see kind of what he's saying, but you cannot sit down, look at James Madison and Kansas on each side and say that James Madison should be ranked and Kansas should not. But I don't want this to be an attack James Madison. There's another guy that had LSU ranked 19th. Yeah. And it's it's a rank. joke. And yeah, like, it's just the, these guys don't even know what they're, they're just writing names. No. To it's his totally. point with James Madison, it's like Middle Tennessee State did beat Miami. But guess who else is fucking overrated because these guys are in the pool stuck? Miami. Like, that game doesn't get as much attention if Miami's just unranked instead of 25th. Like, I'm sorry. It's just yeah. – it's so annoying to me. I went through it earlier because I was tired of people saying strength of schedule. KU has a better strength of schedule than a third of the poll right now. I linked, ranked, linked every single one. Like, that's it's my, so stupid to me. That's my thing is what – like, what are the people voting and what do people saying these wins aren't good want us to do and who do they want us to play? They've covered every week. They won in Morgantown on their home opener after coming off a devastating loss to a ranked team. Houston, who we all said they were – I'm not saying they are great right now, but they were supposed to be great, win double-digit games, win their conference. It's their home opener. They had two tough losses on the road. Um, that's a great win. You put up 48 points. You're averaging 49 points a game. And that's what I'm saying is these guys aren't watching the games. There's no yeah, way in yeah. hell they're watching the games. Because if the eye test, you watch them, this is a ranked team. This is one of the top 25 teams in the country, no doubt in my mind. The body of work, the eye test on the field, there's no question in my mind this is a top 15, top 20 team in the country. And I just – they're not watching the games. And we know – I don't know if it's 100% we know, but I think it's 100% the stigma behind KU football. They don't want to believe it. Absolutely. That they've been the worst power – we've said it a thousand times. They've been the worst power five since 2009. They don't – they see Kansas – and they just automatically assume it's a fluke. And that just right there tells me they haven't watched this team play at all. And Jalen Daniels, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. They got one of the best coaches. Jalen's been as good as anyone. And this team is averaging 49 fucking points a game. And they're not one Against of Against good competition. And, like, and, we're not running it up on a bunch of Tennessee techs. Like, that's what's driving UConn. me crazy. We're not playing UMass. Yeah. Like, we're playing legit either Power 5 or going to be Power 5 in a couple of years' teams. And the other – like – I don't want this to come off as a shot at K-State, but losses have to matter. Like, their win against Oklahoma is no doubt better than any of our four wins. But they lost to Tulane. Like, that has to mean something, right? Like A team that just lost. this. Like, it's right. not like Tulane. Uh, K-State did that thing for a week where they kind of were like, Tulane's legit, and I think Tulane is good. Yes. But, like, they tried to hype it like Tulane was this – Really, really good team. Tulane turns around and loses. Like right. it just has that was to not matter. a good loss. It has to matter. And it and, just uh, bothers me to no end because it's like another thing. And I again I don't want to take anything away from K State. I know I'm a hater of them, so it probably sounds like it. But what if Oklahoma's like top twenty good and not not top ten good like they were supposed to be, or like these guys rated them as you get a brand new head yeah. coach, they've got a quarterback that yeah, he's had success before, but and he's been awesome this year. They lose half their roster last year to USC. Like, what if they're just having a down year? Like, but because they were ranked fifth and they're the Oklahoma Sooners, that win looks amazing. And it is an amazing win. Like, you go into Norman, not many teams do that, except K State does it all the fucking time somehow. But, like, it just, it drives me nuts. And if we went on Saturday, it's not even going to matter because they can't hold us out at that point. And honestly, I think we'd take like a pretty decent jump into the pools at that point. But, yeah, again, it's, it's just, there's just no consistency with it. It drives me absolutely nuts. And I think Rye makes a hell of a point about not being ranked. It's, it's not the biggest deal in the world being 25th or 26th. But like you said, this would be so huge to the players in the program for what yeah. we've been through in 13 years. And Lance taking over a winless team less than two years ago and having them ranked would just show how damn good of a coach he is. I know they're right on the cusp of being there, but players deserve this. And part of me, I don't know, I kind of came around on maybe this. And I think they'll be ready to go no matter what because the coaching staff's that good. But I think – these guys will be motivated and pissed off because you can't watch this team and tell me they're not one of the top 20, 15, 25 teams yeah. in the country. And I, I just think that we said that, I don't know, like Iowa State, where if we beat Iowa State, where do we move, A.B.? Because you said, and I've said it too, like 
we win that game. But I guess what I was starting this comment with, if we lose to Iowa State by like two points, it's going to be so frustrating if that then kicks us. Like, obviously, we wouldn't be ranked next week. And then we beat TCU. I'm still not sure we'd get in the polls that week. No. So it just felt like it doesn't mean we're going to have a disaster of a season. But if we do somehow lose this game Saturday, which we're underdogs in, we easily could. It's very frustrating to think that this team deserved to be ranked. And if something like if we lose this weekend, they won't be ranked at all this season, potentially. Now, I don't think that's I think we will be ranked because I think we're going to win. And but it's just it's annoying. But I did convince myself the spin zone of it's almost been more fun to see the big names like Canal and, and Joe, Joel Klatt and Fornelli, who AB, you've been sharing all his stuff. Like to see those guys hardcore riding with the Hawks to be ranked is pretty sweet because if we were just ranked 25th, I think we're getting less talk. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I mean, people say, oh, Kansas is ranked. And it's kind of like a meme and a joke. But now it's kind of like people are like taking us serious. And they're like, wait a second and pointing out how good this team is. But back to my original comment. If we beat Iowa State, can we make a case for being top 15? I think we can. You can, but they're just not going to do it. No. Would we? Could we? I guess I don't well, pay attention to AP polls in basketball or football. Could we make that jump? Like, I don't know. Probably. Like, I, I guess it's possible. But the problem is, is we beat Iowa State. They're going to drop to three and two. Yeah, and then two and three. Say, well, three I would say it's not good either. Exactly, it's going to be the same thing all over. We'll probably be ranked. I just don't know how people are going to view that because to everyone else, we're still little old Kansas. That sucks. But like, like Braden, you said it last week. The only way we're going to be able to prove it to people is to beat Oklahoma, and by that point, they might not even be ranked. So who knows? We might go all the way through the year and not play a ranked team and go ten and two, and people will still say we're not good. Oh man! Regardless, okay. I feel I feel super good about this team. I'll say it, worst case, 5-1 and one going to Norman. I feel they'll win one of these next two, maybe both. And then you got the three, the tough three-game stretch. And I, th- I forget who Baylor plays this weekend, but – Okie State. Yeah, I think they're favored against Okie State. So that makes – I am I think we can beat anyone on the schedule. I said that last week. Now yeah. I firmly believe it. But think about that. Baylor's a dog against Iowa State, and now it's a three-point spread for us against them. So I don't see why we can't. I'm not saying we'll go into Norman and win, but I think we can compete with those three teams if we play like we've been playing. I know we're not going to score what... 49 points a game, but five and one, six and zero, oh, going to Norman, and then that stretch, and then I think we can win a couple late. I'm not saying we'll win all three or win two, but I think we can win those games. They're all winnable. And talk my, <laughs> I hate hey, this. I've talked myself the... into Arlington <laughs> having a chance. I mean, that's what's crazy, b and I've been laughing at you on this pod because, like, you've said for two weeks now, I think we could, you know, we could hang with Oklahoma. We could beat Baylor. And A.B. even kind of sided with you like he wasn't sold on Baylor. Um, but now I totally agree with you. I don't think we're going to win those games. But I truly think you could walk into every game left on this schedule with maybe – I mean, Norman's going to be tough. Kate, Oklahoma's not going to lose two of three or two of four home games to KU and K-State, we probably will lose that game. But we, you can make an argument, a case for KU winning every game left on their schedule. Doesn't mean they're going undefeated, but we can at least sit down for every game and think we've got a shot in this game. And that's something I genuinely would have laughed at you last week about. But like this Duke game, for a weird reason, sold me that, we can kind of still play bad and be a good, like that's what good teams do, right? They have games where they play bad and they still find ways to win. And that's what we did. We, where it felt like Houston and West Vaugh, for parts of that game, everything was just so perfect where it still left you some like, Oh, what's going to happen when this team faces really bad adversity. We struggled at times against Duke and still really dominated that game. So I don't know. I'm all in on sipping the Kool-Aid with you guys we can win every game left on the schedule what's the uh what's the spread norman in two weeks if we're six and oh going there it was 13 against k-state i think it mm, it depends on what half. ou does ou has got a tough tough road coming up i think they're at tcu this weekend then they got red river the next weekend against texas and then they got us so i mean if they go oh and two we might be like four point dogs but so i, I don't know so this is what I this is what I want to say about my Arlington take Big Twelve Championship. So uh, KCSN 
the three mile podcast. They do the live. They did the live show this weekend after they beat OU and hell of a win by K State. That was I probably would have taken uh, OU minus thirteen if I bet on that. And even K State's history there is crazy. But and they should have these expectations. Like coming into the uh, season, a lot of people had them or at least consider them to win the Big Twelve. So the three mile guys, uh, John Kurtz and Cole Manbeck, are saying. We lost to Tulane, but that's not the full goal. It, the full goal is to get to Arlington, and now they just gave them a hell of a chance. And, yeah, they beat – that's probably the toughest win you can get in the Big 12, the best team at their place. KU's one spot behind K-State in the polls. And I we, we have a chance to win one of the next two, and K-State expects to go there. K-State fans still think they can go to Arlington, play in the Big 12 championship, and they should have those expectations. If KU was middle of the pack – from 2009, like if they were sprinkling in bowl games or were just decent since 09, I feel like our fan base right now would be all in about potentially playing, winning eight or nine games, maybe playing in the Big 12 championship, maybe playing in a January bowl. I saw a January bowl projection what, today. And what and, was that tweet today about KU playing Alabama? The Sugar Bowl? Was but that there was that was? a There was also a Texas Bowl against Auburn. <laughs> which would be kind of wild, an SEC team. But if we were just a decent team since 09, I feel like our fans are still like they're getting there, but they're not all the way in just because of our history since Mangino left. So if K-State has those expectations, which they had them before the year, we didn't. So I get it. And I'm not even knocking the three mile pot. It was great. And they won that game. But why can't we have crazy expectations after the way we started this year? And we have the best offense in the country right now. Take them. I just looked it up. Big 12 championship game winner. KU's plus 1800. Wow. If you want some value. K-State's 4-1, to one, which I guess they went into OU, beat, like, won the hardest game of the year. But still, like, it's it, – I really uh, – yeah. It's crazy to me. I guess the thought is, is K-State just won on national TV against OU, so they're just going to get a lot of public money maybe. But I, I believe 18-1. We to one, I think we were 35 coming into the Duke game. And we were, like, what, 150 think... going into the year? I'm not saying we're getting Arlington a... at all, by the way. I'm just saying yeah. – there's a possibility. Okay, we're, so let's should just be in let's every think game. about this. We're going to be dogs to Iowa State, but a field goal. Like, we're in that game. TCU, depending on what happens against – if we beat Iowa State, we'll be favored in that game, right? Unless they beat OU, which I don't yeah. think OU's losing back-to-back. But So then we're dogs against OU, obviously. Um, dogs against who's Baylor. Who's after that? Baylor. Dogs against Baylor. Oklahoma dogs against State. Okie State. Yeah, so that three-game stretch. Really, like – so if we can, we might not be favored the this year. What is the route to Arlington? Would it be? This is ridiculous. Win the next two. Yes, win, you got to win the next two, and then you go you steal one of those three, and then win out. Is that? I mean that. Yeah, but like again, with my point earlier, the Big Twelve, it's just like everyone be is beating like, up on each other. I just mm-hmm. see everyone is like the same team. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see anyone beat anyone on any Saturday. Like Baylor, so, Baylor and Oklahoma State will have one of those teams will have one win, one yeah. loss after Saturday. And those are one two of, of the Texas, better teams. One of Texas or Oklahoma is going to have two losses by the end of next week. Yeah, like it's, I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time on Arlington, right. but like it's wild that it's my just main the conference point is not. Yeah, go ahead. We're ranked basically. My main point is that I think one of the teams in the conference championship will be six and three in conference. So how do you get to six and three in conference? We're ranked, basically. I love that. I'm just saying, if K State should have those expectations, but we're right there with K State. Yeah, I mean, I we're one zero in the co- where we didn't beat OU. I'll tell you that, but we've won our first, our only game on the road against West Vaughn's getting hated on by K State fans, and I kind of don't get it. I they mean, they dribble Vaughn, absolutely yeah, pumped them. I keep saying they should have beat Pitt, which I don't know if I can say that, but that was obviously a hell of a game. Um, JT Daniels is a stud. Like that's a game K State could lose. I feel like I'm not going to say K State's going to lose a ton of games, but I feel like every K State game, probably the rest of the way, will at least be a contest and be close. Dude, but like every game, I think that's like the thing is every Big Twelve game from here on out. Maybe other than other than the one in Lawrence this week. <laughs> I mean, every Big Twelve game is going to be a tight game. Oh, but AB, you're saying we're gonna shit pump Iowa State. Are we, are we going into predictions now, or do we want to wait? I mean, let's I'd... talk. Let's talk Iowa State. I'm down to talk Iowa State because I don't know how. I mean, 
I don't know how sold I am on them. I don't know a ton about them, but I watched that Iowa game, and Iowa's a weird Ugh. team to figure out. They're <laughs> disgusting. That's so gross. Their offense and I, But, like, Iowa State, I mean, Iowa State's offense is not great, I don't no. think. Um, I got their rush defense numbers pulled up if you want those. Ooh, that's when you guys sold me on us pumping Duke. Was well, we... <laughs> this isn't going to give you that. Um Iowa ran 25 times for 58 yards for two and a half yards or 2.3 yards of carry. Oh, my sweet Lord. Uh, I'm skipping Ohio because that just has to be the cherry on top. Baylor went 42 carries, 123 yards. That's only 2.9 yards of carry. Uh, Ohio, Bobcats, 22 carries, 24 yards, 1.1 yards per carry. Ohio, but Bobcats. My point kind of like what I said earlier, too, we don't have to be so reliant on the run now. Like we could just throw Katie's it over. So good. They, and I looked on the slant earlier. I don't want to say everything I saw on there because they might get pissed. But JK, ah. the guy that runs it, he seems like there's some very good matchups out there for KU against Iowa State's defense. And that Baylor was just getting space whenever they wanted to and getting big play after big play. So that's kind of what the offense has been is big plays this year. But yeah. I just. But I that's know. what's so exciting about this KU team is like. I'm not saying Leipold's a better coach than Campbell, but I think he is. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like to know, like to know that our we're going to be so prepared. Like we've had that question for years: is like, are we even going to be prepared in this game? And to know that Iowa State might beat us, but like we're going to know how to give them our best shot. Like our staff is so freaking good, and. That's just what's so fun about all this is like those little things right there with like the matchups and stuff like that. Our staff's going to exploit those. And like that is going to work. Whereas there were times with Les Miles, it's like they even know who's starting a quarterback from the opposing team. So the way, like, I, yeah. <laughs> Carter told me that he didn't even know we won after we beat Texas Tech. He goes, he tried what's, to call he said, what's happening? <laughs> after we um, recovered a fumble, he was running on the field to call timeout and stop the clock. <laughs> But yeah, dude, that was a in his defense. That was a wild. Yeah, it was the way the way our I've said it every week, but the way our staff adjusts is crazy. The the play I tweeted earlier about that pass to Casey where they Mm. fit the option left, which the options have been so good for us. You've seen it against West Virginia, Houston. Like I'm sure Duke was thinking we're going to run the option a lot all game. We didn't hardly run it at all. Fake the option. Casey falls down on the ground on purpose, gets up 20, 30 yard gain. And boy, is that big boy fast. He's it cracks he's me up when he guy. runs. I sat next to Dexton Fields uh, at the game, and he could not stop laughing after that play. It was so funny. But <laughs> the way they adjust is crazy. And I was listening to Scott Chasen and um, and okay. Kent on their. Po- I was I had something in my throat. And Kent on their <laughs> pod, and they were talking about how Scott was talking to Lou Grimm after the game, and they were saying they've showed like. Three percent of their offense so far this yeah. year. Yeah, and we like enter fifty new plays every Monday. Yeah, is what Luke so said. they're so good, and I just wanted I wanted to talk about Iowa State a little bit. Hunter Decker's their QB, the lefty. Um, he turns it over a little bit. He has five picks, and the few he threw against Baylor were just in tight coverage, terrible decisions. So it'd be nice to force a couple turnovers. He has a he's solid though, seventy two completion percentage. Xavier Hutchinson. He's over 400 yards already receiving. Feels like that dude's been there for a long time. I think he's just been contributing for Iowa State for a couple of years. And then they got a running back, um, Jareel Brock. Jareel Brock. Um, I think it's Seneca Wallace, actually. Mm-hmm. But he's averaging 5.5 a carry. So that's about all I know about Iowa State. Campbell, obviously, solid-ass coach. Um, I just feel good against, about us against anyone right now. So, so A.B., I don't know the answer to this, but you mentioned like Iowa State stats and obviously Iowa State played Baylor. Good team. But has Iowa State played an offense even remotely close to us? No. Like obviously Iowa, I mean, us three could put up more points in Iowa. Um, Ohio. Ohio is Ohio. Ohio Bobcats. And Mm -hmm. Baylor, (laughs) I didn't get to see any of that game, but like Baylor's not like a juggernaut offensively. So like Baylor put up 20 points in a two overtime game against BYU. 20. (laughs) Yeah. First in the goal three and didn't score. Iowa State's defense is good, no doubt. But like, I don't know if they're quite 
battle tested enough for us to be like scared that they're going to completely shut down what we've seen from this KU team. They could, I don't want to look stupid, but like, I don't know. I'm getting to the point where this KU offense is just, I don't care do if your defense them? is good. Our offense is just going to be better than your defense. Right. And like you guys were talking about from booth review, the 50 new plays a week to me, that's just like pre-scouting, knowing exactly what the Iowa state defense is going to so do, good. what the Oklahoma defense is going to do. And we have geniuses in our offensive room that are just drawing up plays that they know will work against that defensive scheme. And so it, to me, yeah. it's just like, I don't even want to look at defensive team stats for the other teams we're going to play. Cause I just know our offensive coordinator and quarterback room, they're just going to put together a game plan. That's going to directly go against it. and work. Dude, it's, it's worked every time so far. This staff's unreal. I can't it's like, crazy. I don't even know how to put it into words. Like they're just, and Future that's why Georgia I feel tech head coach Andy Kotelnicki. Do you see baby. that? Oh, I saw the report. I thought something just got announced. Oh, um, God. Do you guys I want a little? Crying. Unless you guys want to keep going about Big Twelve or Iowa State, I wouldn't mind a little well, Heisman, Heisman segment for Jalen. Do Davis. Heisman segment, and then we'll do predictions for Iowa State. Okay, and so I want to talk over under. So I want to talk with you guys. See, I don't want this to take crazy long. So I got JD's numbers written down, and then I got the top three guys on the odds list, their stats written down, who is um, CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, and Caleb Williams. So I could, I guess I could read all four stats, or I could read like. Jalen stats. You're doing like a profile pick team A, B, C type deal? Well, I was going to, I was just going to say their name and read their stats. I just don't know how many of the guys I should read them. Cause like JD's stats are super comparable to the, to all three right now. I mean, in Williams, like wouldn't Stroud and Young be ahead of Williams? Yeah. So let's so just, just let's, read those. Let's three. compare, let's compare JD to Stroud and Bryce Young. Yeah. So JD's at 71 completion percentage, 890 passing yards, 11 touchdowns, one pick, uh, 326 rushing yards, four touchdowns. So he's at 1,216 total yards, 15 total TDs. Then you got CJ Stroud, 71 completion percentage, same as JD. He's at 1,229 total yards. So he's got 13 less yards, or he's got 13 more yards than JD. He's at 16 total touchdowns, one more than JD. And then one pick, same amount. So he's got 13 more yards, one more touchdown. And then Bryce Young, 69 completion percentage, less than JD, 1,179 total yards, less than JD, 15 total touchdowns, same as JD, same as JD and one more pick. Yeah. And I mean, here's and it's the thing. Not, again, it's not against bad competition. He's doing this against legit teams. And also people are going to say C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young have played – um, they probably haven't played the full game. CJ Stroud's thrown 30 more passes. Bryce Young's thrown 30 more passes. And JD's at 890 passing yards. Bryce Young's just over 1,000. And he's thrown 30 less passes. So he's got 100 more passing yards. If this kid was at a bigger school, he's in the top three. Well, the other thing is those two guys are playing with, like, first-round draft picks around them, too. And nothing against anyone on our team because they've been Dude, sick. Our O-line <laughs> is sick also. Yeah. Like, that's one of the more wild things about this, but like, yeah, one Stroud, Stroud, and Young are being being protected by future, like, all pro freaking <clears throat> linemen, and that's just yes. how sick this offense is. What we have like a D two guy that played D two on our line, don't we? I can't remember. <laughs> I never. I always forget his name, but he's like very good playing on our offensive line. Played D two. Um, so yeah, it's it's crazy. I don't know what. I mean, I think he's starting to get some buzz, but like, I don't know what really needs to happen for him to be legit in the car. I think people still just think it's obviously you got to be like a title contending team to have it. So I think people just know we're probably not. But God, when you factor in what he's done at the program he's done it at, he should get almost more credit. Like doing this at KU is just so wildly impressive that. It's frustrating that it's he taken more, just now. He has more total yards than the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. And the same amount of TDs at Bama with first-round receivers and the best coach in the world. And like A.B. said, he did it one way in one game, and he did it the other way in the next game. Like, he's not just a one – like, Holgerson called him a, a running back that can throw, which I heard Kent, our guy Kent ranting about, which, like, 
I don't think Holgerson was being that no. disrespectful by saying that, but like that is not Jalen Daniels. Like uh-uh. Jalen Daniels can sling it. That throw to Grimm in the corner was insane. And no offense to running backs out there, but most running backs can't make that throw. So, uh, dude, his clutch gene is crazy. Every third down on Saturday, I just feel so good. He, f- I'm sitting next to my cousin. He goes, Luke Grimm here, throws it to Luke Grimm first down. <laughs> Think of that the ball play. to Lawrence Arnold, too, was a dime right over the middle. Touchdown. Jalen has started, like, I don't even know how many. I'm not even going to count the COVID year or whatever. But, like, Jalen has, let's see. You think about the plays, games he's had to play in, the Texas game, the clutch throws he had to make in that game, time after time after time. The Westfall game, the clutch throws he had to make in that game. Um Coming back from 14-0 to Houston, coming back from 14-0 to Westfall, showing up in the atmosphere on Saturday to have one of his best games. Like the dude is just not phased by anything. And like that's what you want in a quarterback. And it's something that I mean, Carter was great. We loved Carter. But like KU just has not really had this level of a player since Reesing. And I don't even want to say it. But like it's going to sound bad, but like Jalen is more talented than Todd Reesing, right? Yeah. Okay. I just, I, I, did, I didn't want to. Is he the best I... quarterback in the Big 12 right now? <laughs> like, uh... we, we don't, people won't want to say it because it's KU, but who's, who's well, better right now? Right. Dylan Gabriel is no, good. I mean, he, he, right now forget? he is. Did you forget that the people forget about losses and bad games? So I would say Adrian Martinez is the best quarterback. 9 a.m. You know what's also crazy about K-State fan is they laughed at my ass for talking about beating Houston before the year because they were ranked and they were going to be really good, and then we beat them. <laughs> now they it's suck. Not, yeah, it's not a good win. Yeah. Well, it's and this is just like the flukiness of sports, and you can't avoid it. But if two like very possible things happen, if – uh, Westfall just hangs on in that pit game, which I feel like they were leading most of the game and had some stupid plays. They're probably ranked when KU goes there. Yeah. And if Houston just wins in double overtime against Tech, which when you get into overtime is kind of a toss-up, they're, they're also ranked when we go there. 15? They're probably top 15. They were 22 yeah. in Tech, or when Tech played them, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. like, it's – I don't know. That's and a good point. Obviously, I mean, yeah, that's those really easy to say, oh, if they don't, if they don't right. lose, they're better. If but butts, it wasn't but like they got blown out. Right. They're both fringe, probably ranked teams if one thing goes the other way. And yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to get into that anymore. Do we want to do predictions? What? A, yeah. I want to ask, what do you guys think the odds are that JD could actually be a Heisman finalist? Like top like three. Go to New York? We got to win, what, nine games probably? Because I shot. did, I did a ton of digging today on just former runner-ups or third-place guys. Like he, his twelve-game pace right now is better than Colin Klein's in twenty twelve. Yeah, but they were a national title contender. Like that's yeah, so we got to win nine. Like JD's, JD's on pace for forty-five total touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, Jim, it sucks that we have three. The, like after this two-game stretch, the three-game stretch we have is pretty tough. It's twelve games. Like if, it's... if he gets through that stretch, doing what he's been doing, then yes, we're three weeks left in the year, and he's absolutely a candidate. If he and gets to that gotta, stretch, we, we got to win. Point. Yeah, like hey. I was, when you guys were talking about it earlier, what would it take to get him as like actual buzz? We beat Iowa State and TCU. We're six and zero. Oh. Probably top 15 going into Norman, who they probably will be top 15 as well. That game probably won't be game day because OU will get it for Red River, but it'll be in a primetime slot, I'm sure. And I thought they get Fox. Would be the... nah, Red River's on ABC this year. They could get Big Noon. Um, yeah. So I don't know. But my, my main point is that game's going to be more of a primetime national TV game. Yeah. And if he shows up in that game, even if they lose and balls out, and his numbers haven't really changed over the next few weeks. I think that's when you start to see him like actually considered and not just a feel good story with still crazy long yeah. shot odds. His 12 yeah. game pace right now is 2,700 passing yards, 33 passing touchdowns, 978 rushing yards, and 12 rushing touchdowns. Yeah, it's crazy. That'll just, do. Um, all right, let's do predictions. We're plus three and a half, wildly disrespectful. Um, if you don't put some money on the money line you're a coward um 
the Hawks are going to win this game, I think. But I don't know about the over. 58, it's disgusting the over didn't hit against Duke. Um, B-turn, I know you know that. It's disgusting the over did not hit. (laughs) You know what's sickening about sports betting? And I'm going to admit this right now. I don't even care. I'm low-key in the back. Why am I saying this? I'm low-key in the back of my mind almost wanting Duke to score at the end there. And not get the two point Force conversion. Overtime. That's, that's and not no, I no. I, was, I lost my oh, two man. points. They were down eight. If they would have scored and not got, I would have been yeah. touchdown. I'd have been like, but kind of happy. And then two point. If they would have got the two point conversion, full meltdown mode. But yeah, I lose the over under. I lose the over by two points, and we get stuffed at the inch yard line. And Neil fum, <laughs> Neil fumbles inside the twenty five. Yeah, I mean, it's brutal. it was brutal to not hit that, but. This is a tough number to me because, like like we said, we think Iowa State has a really good defense. I don't love their offense. But I also, I don't know, A.B., I think we're going to get into your prediction. I could see our offense just pouring it on them. So, I don't know. A.B., I guess let me start. I like the Hawks, obviously, plus three and a half. Um, I like us money line. But I'm probably taking the under... And I'm going to go Hawks 24, Iowa State 21. Put it okay. On. Offense puts it on them there. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to disagree with that under. Uh, yeah, for... that was bad analysis as I <laughs> was doing. You still have no, no, like no, no, no. 14 I points said, to work with. Yeah, well, I guess what I'm saying is – I know where AB is going with his prediction, and I think it's possible, but I'm not willing to just come out and absolutely say that we're going to just pour it on him. I think it could, but I'm not like confidently saying that, whereas I think AB is about to say that. Yeah, my uh, my disrespected play of the month is going to be KU plus three and a half. And my Hammering sprinkle my sprinkle's not the money line. My sprinkle's an alt line when it, when <laughs> it. it, when it comes out on Friday. I'm going to take KU minus 20 and a half. I think KU. Oh, my God. I don't know what the number is going to be. I know it's crazy. And I told you guys before we started recording, I made an emotional decision earlier based off of tweets and scores and videos that I am all in on this blowout shit pump boat race, whatever we want to call it. Uh, the, the score that keeps popping into my mind is 45-17. Um, we'll see. But to me, this is just like. You didn't rank us. Our Heisman guy's still 30 to 1. You guys think we're just this cute story. We're going to show you we're the real fucking deal. We're going to go out and blow the shit out of Iowa State. So 45 17 is my pick. I've talked myself into not being ranked being a good thing. I really Mm do. I think this team's going to be, they'll be ready to go. I said it earlier, they'll be ready to go no matter what. But these, they're going to be pissed off and ready to beat someone's ass, and I don't know if that'll happen. I think it's going to be a good game. I don't see this team scoring less than 30 points against anyone right now, so I'd go 31. Let's go 31-27 KU. Over, I'd like under, to change my prediction. I'm right? disgusted yeah. with myself for saying we'd score 24 points. Um, <laughs> changing my prediction to 30 20 Four Hawks. We're scoring 30. Todd Reasing will be in the building. What's our team total? I don't think those are out yet. But we- I would guess 27 and a half because 31 27 gets you about to the cover yeah. and that's right on the over. So isn't yeah. the isn't the potential of JD just kind of insane too? Doesn't it feel like he's getting better every week? Last two yeah. weeks he's had five total touchdowns in both games and it's crazy how many points we left out on the field last week and how much more room there is for this offense to grow, which sounds crazy because they're averaging 49 points. But if they don't make I mean, those if they don't make those mistakes Saturday, that game's not even close. Yeah, I mean, you, you play that Duke game 10 times. I think KU wins that game by 20, like six or seven of them. I don't know. Like, it, it just felt like we left a lot of opportunities out there, but it didn't feel like Duke did. Like, I don't know. I don't remember Duke making just some bonehead mistake where they were about to score or anything, right? I don't know. I waited in line for a beer for an hour in the second quarter, so I, mm. I may have missed quite a bit. Um, but, 
I don't know. I just I feel like we dominated that game and to only win by eight was uh, not great. But I feel like take it. Oh, like as a whole, we've played in stretches where the defense plays really good, but the offense takes a couple series off. Yeah. Offense plays awesome. Defense doesn't look great. I'm waiting for the game where they put it all together and play like a complete 60 minutes of football, both sides of the ball. And I think that comes out this week. That's basically where my prediction is coming from. But that's what I every, was say. everyone in that locker room is going to feel disrespected and also pissed off because I guarantee you, if we notice it, that they left points on the board and that they could have played better and it was probably their worst performance of the year, the coaches damn well know it and the players know it themselves too. So they're going to get a load of that early in the week, be focused at practice, knowing conference plays back. And It they, feels like our defense is going to have like a big game. I still think it's it's not as bad as like the numbers tell you. No. And I know it's, it's annoying point. to continue to say that every single week and they keep giving up points. <laughs> but Braden mentioned earlier, there's, Duke was stuck at 13 for a long time. And their final yeah. two scores in the second half were when we were up, what, like 18 points? 14 yeah. points, whatever it was. 15. Like I can see a game where we have forced like three, four turnovers and just have like a banana land defensive game. I hope mm-hmm. we do it. Because I don't know if I want it to be – I don't know if we need it to be against Iowa State. I'd rather it be like OU, but I'm not going to get picky here. Um, what What are the odds we get – I feel like no one's talking about this TCU game coming up, and they've looked really good to me. Their offense is electric. Duggan's been unreal. I think he has the best completion percentage maybe in the country. He, he's like a top quarterback in some statistic. So what are the – they're undefeated, I believe. I don't know who they play this weekend. If we win and they win, is – Game day possibility? I was hoping so, but that I don't know up. who plays it's 11 who. 11 a.m. Is 11 a.m. on FS1. It's so bad. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I guess we were hyping up game day to come to 11 a.m. FS1 for Duke, so you never know. <laughs> uh, I, TCU's got Oklahoma and uh, Fort Worth. Let's go Horn Frogs. God, right. can you imagine? If OU uh-huh. starts 0 2, we might uh, definitely talk about I'm going to throw this scenario tour. out to you, boys. What's more likely to happen? He wins a national after championship OU, in After OU, after OU, actually, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm curious. What's more likely? We're seven and zero, or we're four and three? I mean, obviously, the answer is four and three. Yes. But Braden, how's your brain take that? What do you think is more likely? My brain hurts because <laughs> I said we're going to be five and one. Worst case, after these next two. Yeah, but I'm including OU. I just – there's no way we're going to be four and three. I know. That's why I wanted to ask you because I know your brain <laughs> can't comprehend that. But, like, that's a little seven scary. That's a little scary. Four and three is, like, it's possible. But I, I hate know. that I keep doing this. I keep trying to, like, temper expectations. It's just like, who cares? Let's just keep winning yeah. and see what happens. But I, I just wanted to see what you'd say to that. I've been t- I've been saying to myself all day how crazy it is that we're about two weeks away from late night, won a national title, and I'm not gonna lie, there we probably would have had a basketball guest episode within the last few weeks, or we would have done like a preview to late night or like a roster preview by now. You don't even care. All in on KU football, and I haven't even thought about late night or how good we like. In November, we're going to be all in on these KU football games, not even talking about KU playing shitty non-con teams. It's crazy, and we've been waiting for this, boys. Thir- like, not, not even the podcast, but 13 years. We were like 13, 14-year-old kids. It's... The last time we won more than three games, and this, like, it's the best feeling in the world. And K-State fans, I know they don't want us to be happy, but we have every right to be <laughs> insanely happy right now and have our hopes all the way up and it just dude this feels so good we're four and oh and we have a win we have an absolute winnable game at the booth it's going to be sold out this week it's going to be sold out next week and dude i like football's king man like basketball is awesome but the shit football does for your school is crazy brandon rush comes back this weekend mario chalmers comes back all these former alumni players like the football players i talked to like they just have so much pride and talking about former hires they had and how different lances and just talking to the, I had the sideline passes before the game, just talking to some of the guys on the staff. Like we're, I'm laughing, laughing it up, bullshitting with one of them. And he gets the straightest face in the world and looks at me and goes, we're not satisfied. He's like, we're not even, he said, we're not even close to satisfied. And that's, I mean, that's dude, what it gave I me love. Goosebumps and, oh, this team thinks so they happy. can go 12 and 0, which is what I love. It's kind of like, 
the same mindset you mentioned basketball, but like the KU basketball team, Bill Self said all year, like, yeah, everyone kind of doubted that team, Twitter fans, everyone wasn't they Bill's didn't. best team, but like that team thought they were so freaking sick and thought they would <laughs> win every game they played in. And that's how this football team is. Now you got guys like me that are like, well, let's, let's temper expect let's, let's not get out of control here. And they're like, no, well, we'll win every game we play and they might not, but they believe it. And that's all that matters. So it, uh, it's wild. I still can't believe we're here. The fact that we just went like, boom, just straight up. Like we just, nobody listening on audio is going to understand what I just did. But like the drop to just immediately becoming 4-0 is crazy. I thought we'd see like, eh, let's win three, four games this year. We'll be happy to see us just bust out like this is insane. But we deserve it. We absolutely deserve it. So Even this that- program... Even the episode going into the West Virginia game, I wish I want to re-listen to that because we like we just didn't want to have our hopes up, especially against Tennessee Tech. But they did come out and look amazing. And then I mean the that West- episode, we were like, "Can you imagine if we're two and zero oh, going into Houston, and, one and then we can Duke? be two and one, and then we're two and one against Duke at the booth?" And like, it's just crazy how each week our expectations grow, and they should because this team has done nothing to make you think that they're getting worse. So, all right, boys, it's been fun. I love, I love chopping it up about the undefeated Kansas football Jayhawks, but uh, we got anything else before we head out? There's nothing better than your school being good at football. Just nothing. It's facts. It's facts. All right. Thank you all for listening. We will be back uh, next week and rock chalk. <laughs>